Hi, I'm Mike. And I'm Christina. And this is NF, NF Geeks. Geeks. Christina, thank you so much for thank coming you. on. I Thanks appreciate it. Me. Yep, I really appreciate that. Um, Christina is, uh, first of all, is um, Mike's uh, girlfriend, and also is an ENFP, just like me. So we have the same personality <laughs> type. Uh, that's great. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about our personality type, and you can just respond to it. Okay. Okay, in any way you want, and then I'll talk about our temperament, which is um, the idealist temperament. Okay, and you can respond to anything. Okay. All right, so um, how, how does it feel to be the best of the types, of, of all the types? Doesn't it feel great? It feels so good. It's very I validating. Know. <laughs> yes, it is, you know, and we have to feel bad for the ones like Mike who are, you know, a little bit beneath us, but it's okay. We still love you, right? Mm-hmm. We still love you. Very much so. <laughs> <laughs> all right, um, one of the things about ENFPs, about, and about us, and I'd like you to kind of talk about this, is that we're good at reading people. You know, especially in terms of their motivations and what's kind of going on inside of them, especially if they're kind of full of shit. Mm-hmm. It doesn't mean we do something about it. We don't always do the right thing. But if somebody's like sort of somebody says, well, this is why I'm doing something and our heads will be like, no, this is why you're doing it. Um, you know, just knowing the internal world of somebody. So what um, what is your experience with that? Oh, gosh, I have a lot of experience with that. Um, case in point, a uh, little anecdote to outline that. Um, mm. I am in an internship, and I come to my internship with a set of skills that not many interns come with, uh, just because I work in the field that I'm interning at. Mm-hmm. So um, one of the things that I noticed in this current internship is my peers, who are realistically about a year ahead of me, uh, um, they see me as the intern, um, and you know, uh, subsequently, I'm kind of spoken to in that way. And so, a lot of the um, initial conversation, I was able to kind of read that perception of me, and it kind of, unfortunately, changed the way that we communicated with one another. And I found that it changed the way I approached the situation a lot as well. Um, I do find that I make assumptions, and sometimes I question myself about those assumptions. Mm. So, yeah. But do they come out right in the end, do you find? I find sometimes, um, actually more often than not, they are right. Yeah, yeah. okay, that's great, because the reason why I said it like that, because uh, this, this is what happened to me, mm-hmm. especially when I was, I was younger, is that I'd have this, in, and I've said this on the channel before, but I want you to react to it. I've had, I would have this int- intuitive moment about somebody, like, oh, this is what's really going on with them. And then that would kind of freak me out because I would know it's right, but it'd be something anxiety provoking. Yeah. And then to reveal, to get rid of the anxiety, I would come up with an excuse as to why they're really acting the way they are. You know, like, oh, well, they're just doing this because. And what would happen is, is that the last thing I thought of would be wrong. Mm -hmm. And the first thing I said, my first thing that I said in my head would be right. Right. You know what I mean? Like, no, they really were a liar, but that was freaking me out. Have you ever had that kind of experience? Yeah, I find that I try to make excuses for people sometimes. Like maybe they're just having a hard day. This is what I'm talking about. Or maybe they know that they came off that way. Um, So yeah, I I try to give people the benefit of the doubt when I perceive their true intentions to maybe not be as virtuous as I'd hoped they'd be. so yeah, I sometimes will make excuses uh, mm-hmm. for people to kind of not believe the initial perception that I had based on their actions. Yeah, uh, I used to do this. I've learned through this to trust myself more that yeah. no matter how much this impression I'm having of somebody is giving me anxiety, I'm just going to ignore the anxiety <laughs> and go with the you know the moment that I'm having with it. Um, all right, that's good. Um, all right, let's, there's two interesting ones I want to uh, bring up the you know, kind of spring on you. Um, the first one is that, and it may not be the case with you, okay, but um, some ENFPs are sort of accused of being flirty when we're really not being that flirty, but people think we're being flirtier than we actually are. Like in our head, I call it Disney level one. Mm-hmm. Like we're really just like in a Disney movie being nice to people. But someone else is interpreting it as being a little more than that when really 
from our point of view, it isn't. So, is because this happens to me to this day. Yep. This happens to me. Okay, as grotesque as I am, <laughs> as a middle-aged man. <laughs> You're doing but, it right now. <laughs> yeah, but it happens. It happens to me this day. So, yeah. I, I, as a as a fellow ENFP, have have you had that problem, or do people say that to you? Oh, I have so had that problem before. Um, a lot of it I noticed. I think I first really noticed it when I turned 21 and I started hitting the bars. Oh. And I was the kind of person, and I don't go to bars as much anymore. I'm awful busy right now. Mm-hmm. Um, but when I would go to the bars with my friends, I would meet somebody or I'd walk by somebody and I'd notice something about them and I'd stop and I'd say hi or, um, you know, if somebody offered me a drink, I'd, you know, I'd accept the drink and we'd have a conversation and be great, but it wasn't going in the direction that maybe their intentions were. And I, you know, I, I thought, oh, I'm making a friend, you know, and I'm learning yeah, something about somebody. Right. My intentions were pure. <laughs> yes, but, uh, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Totally pure. I yeah. used to be with, you know, actually more than one girlfriend, but I would be at my, I would be my girlfriend at a supermarket and be the cashier. And I'd start talking to the cashier like, hey, how yeah. you doing? Good to meet you. It's a, you know, and I'd read, I'd say their name off their tag. You know, Donna, I'm sure really glad that you did. And be like, why are you talking to the cashier like yeah, that? Yeah, you were Like, no, I was just talking <laughs> to them. They were just like, you know, just talking. Yeah, I can just, I can, I feel it's, I feel very at ease um, just having a conversation with somebody. <laughs> and, and sometimes, yeah, that can be perceived as being aggressive or um, flirtatious. Right. So. so what you say now, so, so that you get the term, you say, no, this is Disney level one. Yes. This Disney is like Beauty and the Beast, <laughs> right? Cinderella, that's, this is the level this is yeah, operating on. One. Right, yes. exactly. Exactly. Yeah. You know, the, the little mermaid, that's the level we're on. Right. All right. So that's, I see, that's good. I feel validated. Yeah. Yeah, I know. <laughs> That's it's, real. It's interesting. Yes. Because, again, all the ENFPs, we all have this problem. So, like, even me, right. again, I'm, like, older. I'm losing my hair, you know. <laughs> but it still happens. Like, I still, yeah. people are like, are you flirting? Like, no. My son will say no, this. I'm just flirting. You know, he'll say it. You know, are you flirting? Mm-hmm. All right. Um, one last thing about ENFP I want to get to is that, um, and this may, I don't know if this will apply to you or not, but we're sort of accused of sometimes of having foot and mouth disease, meaning saying things we really shouldn't have said, even though we, again, we didn't mean it to be that big a deal. You know, we might even interpret that everyone else is making a big deal, but we said something that we didn't think was a big deal, but someone else took it as a big deal. Mm-hmm. And it just sort of came out. We didn't know. All right. Does that, does that ever happen? Does that connect? Yeah, that's happened. And it's actually, um, there was a really big defining moment um, for me in which case that something like that happened where uh, my last class of my undergraduate degree um, we sat outside of social work degree everyone sitting outside and enjoying the sun of the spring and our teacher went around the group and kind of gave everybody a little bit of a you know you this is how I felt about you this year and this is you know um, you know what I would suggest going forward kind of you know just an end note um, mm-hmm. for all of the students and I was under the impression we had a great rapport and I really loved her I thought she was brilliant and we did we had a good rapport but her feedback to me was Christina sometimes you just say things um, uh-huh. and sometimes I want to just take your words back and it really made me stop and think wait a second, am I saying things without thinking about them? Yes. Do, I, <laughs> do I say things that maybe I perceive as simple honesty or, you know, kind right. of un, un, you know, unapologetic honesty? Uh, exactly. And you, is it maybe you know, not the most acceptable way that's of right. coming off? Preach so, it. Yeah. <laughs> Preach it. Definitely. Preach it. Definitely. Right, exactly. I'd yeah. say the same thing. People say, and you should ask Mike because in class, because I say all sorts of banana cake things in class. <laughs> Um, cause I feel this is my pulpit. I have, you know, I have all the power to say whatever I want, yeah. but I've been called provocative. Yeah. Okay. Would you say I'm provocative, Mike? No, I wouldn't, but I can see. <laughs> oh, someone else would? It's, um, it's, I would call it like wit and quick, <laughs> you know? Okay, like, good. I don't know. It, it works for you. Yes. You know. Uh, yes, I don't know if the other students would <laughs> say be that nice. Um, all right, so that's good. That makes me I'm validated yeah, a lot yeah. here. All right, so let's talk about being um, an NF. So one thing that obviously we share, you know, because we're the same type, but we are we're intuitive feelers, which means we share things with the other intuitive feelers, the INFP, INFJ, ENFJ. Mm-hmm. So I want to talk about uh, values and orientations we all share, the, the, the you and I share with these other types. And one of the important ones is transformation. Um, either transforming ourselves from one thing into a much more 
you know, like blossoming into something else or helping someone else uh, blossom into something, into something, you know, working towards that. So how does that connect with your life and what goes on? Oh, it's very valid. Um, the career path I've chosen is social work. So um, one of the major things I do is I don't necessarily do the work for my clients, but I give them the tools to help them transform their lives or um, manage a situation or, you know, uh, be it a, a diagnosis or um, an addiction or just a hardship. Mm. Um, so it and it gives me a lot of pleasure to see people use a tool that I've given them. Um, it really is something that I want to spend my life doing. Um, and by the same token, it's something that I like to do for myself. You know, um, setting goals for myself and really mm. kind of your own transformation. Seeing myself achieve that, yeah, and and get to that higher level of functioning that ultimately I want to get to. Um, definitely a part of my day-to-day -day life. So. Oh, great. Um, another value uh, that we have that we share with the other uh, NFs is enthusiasm, having sort of an emotional enthusiasm for doing things, being things, doing whatever. Um, how? What do you think about that in terms of when does it come up and how do you think? Um, all the time. <laughs> Mike just whispered all the time. Ah, uh, very enough. I am very, very enthusiastic all the time. Um, in, I did a group session um, at the crisis stabilization unit I intern at, and they said, Christina, you're always smiling. You're mm -hmm. always you're always happy, and I, I said I don't know if I should apologize for that. Um, you know, I, I hope that's okay, and they were happy, they were fine with it's okay. But I try to approach life with the utmost enthusiasm, yeah. even when I'm exhausted. Um, I feel like that helps me get through the day. It helps me um, really just access all the positives that there are to access, and mm -hmm. I kind of, you know, I cling to those every day. Huh. Um, that actually is a good connection to another value that we have, which is authenticity. Mm -hmm. You know, being sort of true to yourself and being authentic and doing things that are authentic. You know, actually we kind of talked about it a little bit just as ENFPs um, in terms of what we say mm -hmm. <laughs> to yeah. others. But um, in a larger sense, uh, what does being authentic mean to you and where does it show up in your, in your oh, world? Oh, I think it's so important to be authentic. Um, I try to approach life as authentic as I can possibly be and I... I really think I have maybe um, a strict expectation that others do the same, um, and it upsets me or kind of disappoints me if they don't. Mm, right. Mm -hmm. So um, being authentic is is so important because you know if, uh, for example, in, in the work that I do, if I'm doing something wrong or if I'm doing something and I'm totally off base, I want to know. I want that feedback. You know, let me know what I can do so I can fix it and we can adjust it um, same with my personal life you know if there's something that I'm doing I need to know what it is that's wrong or that's right you know um, and I need that authenticity coming from the people that approach me so that we can have this kind of you know open honest truthful hmm. kind of uh, interaction with one another Wow that's great um, all right one more um, and that is is one thing that uh, um, NFs are, are interested in is uh, romance and romantic things. And we all sort of have an, uh, an affinity or an addiction uh, uh, towards that. And I want to know, this, how does that connect with you? Do you feel that that's true? Oh, yeah. Um, romance, um, I guess in the most traditional sense, as far as you know, the relationship I'm in and everything, there is that sense of connection that I that I crave and I need all the time. So <laughs> maybe not all the time, but you know, when there's moments, <laughs> um, you know, I don't see my significant other as much as I'd like to. So when I do, it's almost like we. I I joke. It's like I dump all my love on him, and, and <laughs> I expect the same. Um, but in another sense of the word, um, romance to me is the beauty that that is in everything. And um, I do. I know. You know. We kind of touched upon this in a previous conversation, but. Yes. Um, the world. I'm so enthralled and so intrigued by the world and everything it has to offer. I want to see um, the buffalo roaming. I want to see yep. the salt flats of Utah. Um, I appreciate so many of the little things. Um, and I guess I have this keen sense that we take a lot for granted. And even in my life and in my little Fall River house, I take so much of this for granted. Um, hmm. So it kind of makes me stop and, you know, try to remember that, you know, one day I'll see those buffalo and I'll hug a redwood tree if I can even curve my arms around <laughs> it. Hugging a tree. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, ah. but it's, you know, I kind of have to remind mm -hmm. myself to stay grounded and appreciate the beauty and the romance that is in my life now. So. All right. 
All right, great. Um, well, thank you, Christina. Appreciate it uh, for so doing this. For um, um, as always, make sure to follow NF Geeks on Twitter and Tumblr, Definitely. and come join the fun on the NF Geeks uh, Facebook forum. Um, and uh, don't forget, it's always happening, right, Christina? Say it. It is it's always happening. Always happening. That's right. It's happening. <laughs>